Michigan. Uh, he wasn't mentioned by name, but that was probably quarterback Colin Kaepernick he was talking about. Kaepernick has not been signed to a team since 2016 when he began kneeling during the national anthem and started a league-wide trend. Recently, the New York Times got a hold of a recording of NFL owners and players talking about the kneeling crisis last year. The conversation has lots of talk about damage control and none at all about the core issue. Well, Dave Portnoy is known to millions as El Presidente, not the president of a country, but instead of a mindset. He is founder of Barstool Sports, of course, and he joins us tonight. Dave, I wanted to ask you about this because you're one of the few people whose judgment on this I trust. So Colin Kaepernick has not been re-signed. Do you think in a total, in an utter meritocracy, he would be playing or no? Yeah, oh, yeah, he would, totally. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I think he is good enough to play. Um, if I was an owner, I, I, I wouldn't sign him personally, not because I care whether he kneels or he doesn't, but if you're an owner, why would you want this headache? I mean, that's how they look at it. Uh, right. It's just going to bring controversy. So is he good enough to play? Absolutely. But the owners don't want to, they, they don't, owners want no headache. So why, why take the headache? Wait, you, you saw the piece on the three-hour meeting that the owners had with the selected players. And in my reading of it, the owners sounded like they were living in a different country. They didn't seem to fully understand the forces at work here. Is that a fair take, do you think? Do they know what's going on? Uh, I don't think they totally knew what's going on, but it just goes to the other point. And to a degree, I think they do. They just know there's a controversy around right. it. And the owners are very conservative, and they're on a money train. I think the ideal world for an owner would be another owner sign them. I think that's honestly what they like, but none of the owners <laughs> want to be the guy to sign up. They all want to point the finger. Hey, why don't you bite the bullet? Why don't you bite the bullet? Because it's good for the NFL, I think, overall, if they put this issue behind them, but nobody wants it to be in their backyard. Right. So these are not necessarily moral leaders. They're businessmen who want the franchise to continue throwing off huge amounts of cash. Oh, is anybody thinking the owners care about anything but making money? They absolutely do not. Any, any insight in that they care about the moral issues or whether it's right, wrong, how people feel, they do not. They absolutely care about the bottom line, the money, and what it means to the football. That is the clearest thing the NFL has ever done. And you see it with this issue. You see it with every issue that basically comes up in the hypocrisy of every decision they make. It's all based on money. And Roger Goodell is the leader and basically put it, you know, licking his finger, putting it in the air and seeing which way the wind of public opinion is blowing and how he thinks it affects the bottom line. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've noticed. So I wanted to get your take on this since you run Barstool, which I think has some of the most sensible people in America reading it. And so as a reality check, there's a student at the University of Utah who's created something called a crying closet. And the idea is that college is so stressful that kids need a place to go to weep in private. Um, this is apparently flourishing on that college campus. Do you think that your readers would use a crying closet if they had a chance to, uh, to, to use it? I do not. Uh, unfortunately, this story is the least surprising story of all time. Um, college kids are babies. Uh, that That's well known. And we should say it's the minority. I, I bet most normal thinking people yeah. are like, what is going on here? But these stories get sensationalized. And then you get you, you get basically rewarded for it. It's the, uh, you know, everyone gets a trophy generation, basically. But, I mean, do you think we're, being, we're told constantly that there's nothing wrong with an adult man crying in public and that you should be proud to express your emotions and yet a lot of people kind of feel like well actually there is something kind of embarrassing about weeping over exams or something in public do you think we should be embarrassed yeah yeah, I mean, good. I, I, if you just, there's certain reasons to cry. I mean, if there's a death in the family, I certainly right. will not make fun. But if you're crying over an exam or crying because you stubbed your toe or something little, I think that's embarrassing. It's the same reason when somebody falls in public, you scramble up. It's human nature. Um, I do think there's something embarrassing to it. Uh, yeah, I do. So let me ask you one last question. So a country that encourages college students to cry in crying closets, is not a country that's going to produce a lot of competitive NHL players. So do you think maybe one of the reasons that so many people in the NHL are from Canada or Eastern Europe is that we're 
not tough enough to play the game? That is a wild leap. No, I just think that hockey. <laughs> I know. I mean, it yeah, I just think hockey is probably national sport in Canada. And again, this is the minority. And in a weird way, that you want a wild leap in logic. The, the the thing we run into is is the you know the minority, the vocal minority, make a lot of noise. And it's almost like yeah. the Facebook thing that just happened. So many people, it's such a big story. But then the earnings came out. Most normal people don't care. There there is just there's such an outcry for things from again the vocal minority that things like the crime closet most people aren't using that it's just the people who use it like social media you hear about it and then guys like me and you make fun of it uh, and, and we should actually throw the people crying and lock the door and leave them in the closet it's like proverbial sticking a kid in a locker in middle school that's what the people in those lockers below put them in there let them cry and lock the door and don't let them out the swirly solution I yes. love it. well that's why I like Kevin Young because you are a, a, a well-needed ray of reality into the dark insanity of my world. Dave, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for having me. Jim Comey says the House Intel Committee's investigation into Russia was too political and the rest of us should ignore it. Huh. We'll talk to the chairman of that committee right after the break.